Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. It's a transfer video again, of course. That's all we've got to talk about from a Liverpool point of view during this time of the year. The World Cup is still ongoing and I'm enjoying it very much. Argentina have just qualified tonight, uh, but we're gonna, I'm going to let other people talk about that because I want to talk about Liverpool and the transfer rumours that I've been doing around over the last few days. I'll be completely honest, we're feeding off scraps a little bit and there's not much concrete going on at the moment and I don't mind it, to be honest, because... Um, I'm enjoying the World Cup and you know, I'm happy to wait until the start of July when people start coming home from the World Cup, mid-July when everyone is back from the World Cup and we'll start to see things really pick up uh, in the pace, especially with the window finishing or shutting before the usual time of the end of August. It's now going to be before the season uh, in the middle of August there. So, going to be a mad rush, uh, but let's assess the rumours regardless. Before I get started, I just want to say... Follow me on Instagram because um, Instagram TV is, is up and running. I'm going to be doing some content on there from now on, um, starting with a Q&A. So if you go into my DMs on Instagram now, if Ben might say, um, ask me any question you like and I'll answer it in that Instagram TV. So follow me on Instagram. Stay tuned on there for the Instagram TV Q&A. And I'll be doing vlogs and stuff on there and maybe even talk about some transfers on there exclusively. So make sure you are over there. For now, let's get into the rumours or the stories. Um, I'm going to start, I've got all the stories in front of me here, I'm going to start with Hakim Ziyech, who I've not mentioned before. Um, we've been tenuously linked with him uh, from time to time. Uh, it seems that Roma are ending their interest in the player. Um, I'm not sure if they've been priced out of a move, but um, Calcio Mercato uh, is saying that they're no longer going to go for the Moroccan international. Liverpool have been linked with him in the past. Um, obviously, we're still looking to replace Coutinho. Fakir deal fell through, or, you know, is off the table, we don't know. Um, so Ziyech is being kind of touted as, as an option here. Uh, if you look at his stats from last season, nine goals and 15 assists in the league, awesome. Season before that, um, seven goals and 11 assists for Ajax as well. Um, so this guy's got numbers. He can play anywhere in the midfield, he can play wide. Um, he's looked pretty sharp for Morocco in the World Cup as well. So he, you know, he seems like a, a viable option, I think. Fees are sort of 25 to 30 million. They've been thrown around. Um, obviously, he's 25 years old. It's not outrageous. It's a it's a low, lower risk situation than Fakir, obviously, who'd be maybe 60 million. He's got the knee problem, so it's um it's a deal I can get on board with. Obviously, he's lit up the the uh, Eredivisie. Um, we've seen players come with mixed success from that division. Obviously, like Memphis Depay came over and sank the place out of Man United, but we've seen Christian Eriksen come and do well. Don't count. Uh, obviously coming to Liverpool and doing well, but you do see a lot of flops come from that division. Ziyech, though, seems like the kind of guy, just based on his performance at the World Cup, that could maybe perform on the big stage. So um, maybe we're going to have a clear run at him, but the Fakir move is still rumbling on, so I'm not going to read too much into it. I'm, at the moment, not really considering this Ziyech interest as being, as being awfully legitimate. We might be considering him, I'm sure we are. Uh, but I will move on to Fakir. There's stories coming out every few hours about him. I, I watched him earlier for France against Denmark. I thought he was France's best player, even though he only came on for about 20 minutes at the end. He was looking to make stuff happen. I said on Twitter that I wasn't really sure how I was feeling about it um, because it looked like he had something to prove, whether he's trying to attract the attention of other clubs, whether he's trying to prove to Liverpool that he's, he's, he's absolutely fine. Um, obviously, his issues run way beyond this World Cup. It's an issue that could be career-ending if he gets one more knee issue. So... Um, but he, I thought he was really bright for France. A couple of efforts just wide, um, just good skill, good interchange and play with the, with the rest of the forwards there. I thought it was really, really impressive. Anyway, uh, Aula um, is saying that he wouldn't rule out uh, Fakir signing a new deal at Lyon. So this is John Mikel Aula, uh, the Lyon president. He said he had an exchange with him the day before we decided to stop the negotiation with Liverpool. He was very serene. I immediately told him that if he wanted to stay, we could extend his contract. Uh, I said before that we did not need to sell, we, we have the means to keep Fakir. So they're not under any pressure to sell. It's not like the Roma situation last year with Salah where we knew really that they needed the money to um, comply with FFP. Um, and is he going to force a move? Is he going to do, do a Van Dijk or a Coutinho or a, or a Naby Keita maybe, depending on which way you look at it, and try and force a move? Who knows? He seems like a decent guy. He seems, like, he seems pretty relaxed about the whole situation. Not throwing his toys out of pram. He's, he's at the World Cup of France, trying to make a good impression, playing well when he's been called upon. Um, so let's look at the other story that came out around him, and that was by Get French Football News, who are saying that Nabil Fakir's representatives are hoping Liverpool will salivate again. So there seems to be hope uh, on both Fakir's side, well, 
certainly on Fakir's side that Liverpool resurrected. Liverpool side, I, I, I think they are still hopeful because we've heard nothing in regards to an alternative, um, and nobody seems to be saying otherwise. All the whispers are that we are still interested and the deal could well still be thrashed out. Every, every kind of podcast you listen to, every report you read, no one's ruling it out. David Maddox even suggested, um, David Maddox from the Mirror that is, has even hinted that um, the deal's not dead. He, he, he thinks it's unlikely. Everyone, everyone thought it was unlikely uh, on that Saturday, June 9th, that fateful Saturday, June 9th, when it all got called off. Um, but now everyone's kind of not really sure where they stand. So Nabo Fakir, very much to the possibility. I don't want to feel like I'm repeating myself in every video, but leave a comment with your thoughts on that as you do every single time, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, Marco Asensio, a man I made a video on the other day, um, he was asked about Liverpool's interest in him, um, and he said, Liverpool, when the World Cup's over, we'll talk about that sort of thing. Now I'm focused on selection, which is completely fair enough. He's deflecting any interest, um, any any questions about interest in him. Uh, Guillaume Balaguer has shot down um, the reports that we uh, made a bid. He's saying there's no 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 bid. So um, whether you trust him or not is up to you. But yeah, it doesn't feel like that's exactly hot on the transfer sort of you know thermometer at the moment. Um, Essentially, as yeah, so Liverpool seems very unlikely, but the links are still there for those that want to believe them. On to goalkeepers. Um, we saw a report about Sillison the other day. Liverpool have made contact. Um, today, uh, it's come out that Lazio are reluctant to sell their keeper, Thomas Strakosha. Um, despite Liverpool's interest, that's Calcio Mercato. They've been busy this summer. A lot of the Italian guys have been busy this summer. Um, he, made, he played 53 games for them last season. I've mentioned him before. Um, Leverkusen have been interested as well. Obviously, they've sold their keeper, Bernd Leno, to Arsenal. Um, but it looks like he's not going to be going anywhere, so the search goes on. Leave a comment with who you think it's going to be. We still don't know. Uh, on to current Liverpool players. Danny Ings is the man that has been in the news today. If you've got Paul Joyce's notifications turned on, you've got that notification this afternoon that Danny Ings wants to leave Liverpool, um, which is a shame because we all like Danny Ings as a, as a guy. Some of us don't necessarily rate him as a player, I think he's okay, um, but he didn't set the world like when he when he came in at the back in the last season for a few league games here and there. Um, the likes of Palace and Burnley are both considering moves for him according to the independent. Seems about his level to be fair, I think we none of us would begrudge him going back there, rebuilding his career, getting back into regular um, scoring form and maybe he can make a push for an England call one day, who knows, stranger things have happened. Um, you know, Palace are hardly high on strikers. They have to play Zahar as, as, as a nine, and even Townsend at times last season. And Burnley, well, they've got a lot of Grocks up front. They've got Vokes, Wood, Barnes. Um, I'm probably missing one there. But yeah, it's not exactly any any small strikers that can kind of inject a bit of pace into that front line. So both destinations would make sense. And he used to play for Burnley as well. So I'd be happy to see him go to either place as long as we get decent money for him. Daniel Sturridge, of course, is another one that we're looking to sell. No one's been in for him at 50 million though. Um, so maybe if we can kind of adjust our adjust our um, asking price there, then maybe he'll end up somewhere like Sevilla, I've seen linked, or um, clubs in Turkey are looking at him. Um, we'll see what happens with him, but I think we can be safe in saying that Sturridge and Ings will not be Liverpool players next season. With Ryan Bruce signing a new deal, you'd imagine he's going to be kind of that backup behind Firmino and Solanke, and um, the wingers that we've got, like Salah, who can play as a nine, I'm sure they'll be backup strikers as well, um, if necessary. Uh, Speaking of strikers, the last story I've got up here is around Divock Origi. He seems to be the one where we're not quite sure. Um, I'd be surprised if we let Solanke out on loan. Um, obviously, Firmino will stay. Ings and Sturridge will leave. Origi, I mean, if we keep him, then that's you know that's uh, that's Firmino, Solanke, Brewster, and Origi as your four. That's not a bad. I mean, it's not a great four, is it? It's not. It's not a lot of options, but. Um, Typically, clubs have four central strikers, and Origi is capable. You know, in in that sixteen seventeen season, he did score some good goals in the first half of that season, in particular in the Europa League run. The season before that as well, he was okay. Um, but the second half of the sixteen seventeen season, I just thought he lost all his rhythm and all his confidence, and that wasn't the first time we'd seen him suffer from that. Didn't have a great time at Wolfsburg last season on loan. They almost got relegated. Um, he couldn't nail down a, a permanent place on the side. Um, Jürgen Klopp was reportedly keen to assess his performances in pre-season, so we've seen Liverpool players' careers get resurrected in pre-season. Alberto Moreno was definitely going to leave um, last summer before he did well in pre-season, and he, he was suddenly starting on the first day of the season against Watford, and he kept his place until he got injured when Robertson came in. 
So don't be surprised to see Origi uh, as, as an option next season if he has a good pre-season. He's going to get the opportunities because Firmino is going to be at the World Cup till late. He's not going to be back. Um, same can be said for Mane. Salah might need a rest. I mean, he, he almost certainly will need a rest. He's not even fit at the moment as it stands. So Origi's going to get plenty of chances um, in that front line in pre-season. So if he can impress uh, in, in the games against Bury, Tranmere, um, Chester and Blackburn, and if he can go on the tour, which I'm sure he will, and impress out there, who knows? I'm kind of so-so on Origi. I, I've, I've really rated him at times. Um, kind of the calendar year of 2016, I suppose, was, was his, his best. Um, but outside of that, he struggled in Liverpool shirt. I'm not sure if he's got what it takes. His touch isn't that great. Um, his finishing is iffy. So leave a comment. I mean, I think it's a really interesting debate, and I think it's one that's kind of fifty-fifty. Where on should we keep Divock Origi around as an option next season, or should we sell him and maybe buy and maybe put that money towards getting a, a better option there, or should we loan him out, give him another chance to find some form? He's getting. He's not exactly a spring chicken. He's twenty-three. I guess there's plenty of time to develop, especially for a man of his size. Um, so there you go. That kind of rounds up the day's rumours or the last few days' rumours. Nothing concrete. I think the Merseyside journalists have been quiet. By the time this video goes out, maybe we'll have some half ten news on a, on this Tuesday evening where we're set to sign Neville for here tomorrow. Who knows? That is the beauty of this transfer window. That is the beauty of um, every summer. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Just a reminder: just follow my Instagram. My IGTV um, channel will be live very soon with the Q and A. So leave any questions for me in my Instagram DMs. It's Ben I say. I'm there. Subscribe to me on here if you're new. Uh, the vlogs are going to be coming back, obviously. The football season is about to start, or the pre-season campaign is going to start at Chester in a week and a half, so I'm going to be there vlogging that on here and on Instagram, so make sure you are around for all of that. And I'll see you next time.